what is up good morning everybody it is just after two o'clock in the morning uh my best friend is just getting ready i'm ready making a coffee and before you know it um we're going to be in winnipeg picking up this bus so feeling kind of out of it but uh i'm sure today's going to be great so stay with us and before we know it we're going to be there all right, we are in Winnipeg. I'm getting the bus. You're gonna see more later. I'm gonna get the drone up. We're gonna do a whole tour of it. All day tomorrow, we're doing a pre-trip. We're gonna go over everything. Wheels, tires, seals, fluids, belts. Um, so stay tuned and uh, holy crap. All right, everyone. So we just finished breakfast. Um, had a couple coffees and watched uh, Super Troopers 2 in my buddy's trailer. Gonna start working on the bus a little bit here. Today is just a day of getting everything ready for tomorrow. One thing that I wanted to do, which was super important to me, is I wanted to pay a little respect to a buddy of mine who passed away. Henry was my dispatcher at Leduc Bus Lines, and we had a very unique friendship because at that point in my life, I was going through a lot personally, and he worked a lot in my dispatching and my charters to accommodate things that most drivers didn't have going on, and frankly, things that weren't his responsibility, but he was such a gem. He encouraged me and honestly, like, respected that guy in ways that I can't even describe. Um, we didn't always see eye to eye on certain things, but I understood that he had a job to do, but he always made sure that I was okay, always gave me good equipment, and gave me shots that a lot of people in the industry wouldn't necessarily do. So between Henry and uh, Jasmine LaDuke and his father and his uncle, who own Leduc, my career was able to be catapulted and I went from companies wanting you know that three-year experience mark and all that to these people giving a shot on me and on my birthday putting me on the insurance and sending me on a multi-day tour and Henry was texting me and wishing me good luck and stuff so when he passed away it really affected me I bawled like a baby what I did is through my social media you guys might remember all of us at Leduc that were able to make his um, celebration of life and funeral. We rode on a Leduc bus and we actually, on the way to the funeral, picked up his ashes and drove him there on a bus. And I made a plate for that bus, which is co-pilot Henry, his birthday, and the day he passed. So he was our co-pilot that day on that bus. And since then, I've brought this license plate on every charter that I did until COVID hit. And with the industry being the way that it is and not knowing when it's going to come back, I am I'm actually getting emotional right now. Um, I'm gonna put Henry on the front of my bus and he's gonna be my co-pilot on the way home. And I'm gonna put his card from his funeral in the bus next to me and he is gonna be on this bus everywhere I go. So I'm not gonna wait for the charters to come back. Henry loved busing, he loved coach buses. He was almost as crazy as me, but he had decades of experience and he was respected by everybody in the industry. Henry could call anybody and they drop what they're doing to send him a bus or rescue a bus. So definitely want him to keep traveling the highway with me and so I'm going to put him on the front and from Ontario in my carry-on I brought a plate frame and cover so we're going to do that so just wanted to show you guys that before I do my cold start I've also handwritten a couple cards for my friend Pierre my host and my seller Andy because truthfully for this whole matter to have happened it took a lot of people believing in me and seeing my dreams and making them come true so today is going to be a hard working day but it's also super emotional and after last night with a bonfire and there's great people and no cell service like i am feeling all sorts of ways today refreshed rejuvenated relaxed clear and so blessed i know it's so typical to be that pumpkin spice time of year and be like you know live laugh love hashtag blessed but i really am feeling blessed because i'm 28 years old standing on my private coach bus and getting Henry on the front uh, is just these are things that I did not think would happen in my life until I was 50 and I'm 28 and it, I'm speechless so just wanted to show you guys the plate I'll show you where we're putting Henry and then uh, we're gonna cold start the bus and let it air up I'm then going to open the taps uh, it is getting cold here at night and in the morning so we want to have heat it's gonna cover some of the dates but for the sake of being on the highway and protecting it. Hopefully this works, but we're gonna do something like this.
Good morning, everyone. It is morning number two in Manitoba. We are in the middle of nowhere, an hour and a half from Winnipeg at our friend's camp. We are off grid. With everything going on in 2020 and the nature of COVID, we wanted to definitely segregate ourselves from any other potential risks and also others that we could put at risk because, you know, we have traveled from Ottawa. So we're out here in the middle of nowhere. We're going to do a video later as to just how remote we are. So, so far, I've been able to find a set of original manuals for the bus. These things have been going on eBay for about $200, $250 each. I got them in the original manufacturer's binder, the parts manual, the maintenance manual, and a copy of the operator's manual. I got them all for this coach for a hundred bucks. So total value would have been closer to 600 bucks. I got them for a hundred. Today is a mechanical day. I'm gonna do a cold start video. Then we're gonna head over to the bus boneyard where there's like 30 or 40 Greyhound buses. And I just need to get some 24 volt bulbs for my marker lights, my tail lights, uh, turn signal switch. I'm picking up a bunch of brand new rims. When Greyhound was pulling out of Western Canada, they auctioned a bunch of stuff. My seller bought a crate of OEM rims. So I'm gonna grab a set of rims for this bus for next year and just some other little odds and ends. I'm gonna try to get a table to turn to chairs around and have a little uh, dinette type situation and a 24 volt uh, charger. Nothing that I have at home is 24 volt. Just wanted to get on here. This is day two. Last night was uh, amazing. Being that we are an hour and a half from civilization with one bar standing either at the front of the bus or by a special chair with a rock over there, which signifies like where you get one bar. It has been amazing. The nicest people, amazing food, and just an ability after everything that's happened this year to just disconnect it was actually funny we were sitting just up the road by like this little watering hole or beach as they called it and we're like man i can't believe that we're in the middle of nowhere and we've got two highway motor coaches out here how funny would it be if another one showed up and sure enough my seller who owns the adjacent property sh shows up in another bus through on the trail so we'll put that video in here i've got i took a video of it it's priceless we're just sitting there in the middle of nowhere and you, <laughs> you hear this loud detroit diesel coming and it's like that movie with uh Leslie Nielsen, when that trade pops around the tree, we're sitting there and a bus just pops around the corner. But um, amazing people, just being able to disconnect. And honestly and truthfully, I have not felt this recharged in so long. Greg offers an amazing life at home. Just his presence and his being and just our home is amazing. He's going through a lot right now with school startup as a high school teacher with COVID. And I know that he's got a lot going on. So in some ways, probably not the best time for me to take off and get a bus. But in other ways, he now has his space and I'm out here with my best friend who's also gone to hell and back. I don't know if you guys follow my social media, but you'll see that Chris and I have been hanging out and he is a trooper. Like 2020 is already bad enough for everyone. Then you add on some similar stuff to, to what I went through with my exes. And for us to just both be here off grid in a conversion coach, we're having the time of our lives and just I'll put in some of the drone footage from last night. Just peaceful. Just have not felt like this in a very long time. So couldn't get any better. So stay tuned. I'm going to time lapse some bus stuff today. It'll be pretty fun. And then tomorrow we are on the road to Ontario. Stay tuned. All right, everyone. So I've spent the last seven or eight hours going through that boneyard, getting things specific to this coach. I cannot thank Andy, my seller, enough for his kindness and just letting me kind of go over everything. He has actually gifted me with a new turn signal lever because the one that I have uh, doesn't auto cancel. So we're going to be putting that in when we're home and two NOS white cast metal side marker lamps to replace two of the ones that I have on the bus. Two I can probably refinish and then two I will just replace. He's also graciously replaced that reflector that was uh, ripped off at some point in this bus's life. So in the bay, going home with me, I have another drive belt, 
some spare filters. Pierre, who I'm staying with, actually had four of my rims for my limousine. When I was out here in July, we did a switch and then I left the other rims with him to get all of his tires switched around. So I am gonna be switching the rims on the bus to white to match the period correct Greyhound look. And in doing that, I don't have a facility where I can leave the bus on blocks while I dismount these rims, take them, get sandblasted, painted, whatever. So my seller actually bought lots, like not quantity lots, but like several lots of product or material from Greyhound when they were pulling out of Western Canada. So I've actually got some rims. I've got three. We're going to try to find another three with the proper pilot stud, I guess that's called, when it's tapered. Um, but you can see from Cal Tire, Greyhound lines. This is 005 of seven, well, whatever, 22 fives. And they're already painted. So what I'm going to do is I'll be able to sandblast these, paint them white, and then next year put them on. And I'll dress it up a little bit, you know, put little chrome hubcaps and lug covers and stuff like that just to dress it up for the show. But I've also got a 24 volt battery charger that I will hardwire to the batteries. So that way I can just plug and recharge it. I've got some lenses and sockets for the marker lights, a drive belt, super gracious. So above and beyond what any seller would normally do. Gonna go through a few more things tonight, but basically tonight we're gonna be staying in that coach. My friend is in the trailer and we're gonna have a really great barbecue dinner with all of us off grid. When the sun's up tomorrow, we start heading east. So I don't wanna push the bus too hard. So far, we did all the paperwork and the registration yesterday in Winnipeg, came an hour out here, taken it to town a few times, took the guys to the liquor store. It's running great, drives straight, everything's working as it should, knock on wood but I do have probably about 100, 110 kilometers just as test runs, cold start, fire it up, let it go, let it idle, highway driving, back road driving. So I'm confident, I don't wanna jinx it, but I am confident leaving tomorrow. I'm gonna to try to get it washed somewhere along the way just so that way it doesn't look as Detroit diesel-y at the back. I've got one of my GoPros up here, which I'm actually going to take out to charge. We're gonna be getting some really cool views. I'm gonna get some drone footage on the back roads before I hit the Trans Canada. I would like to get as far as Kappa's casing tomorrow, so I guess we'll find out momentarily with the edit job how far I've made it on the first day. Kappa's casing would definitely be a full day driving, more than half. That would get me home Sunday night and then give me time once I'm home to clean it, play around it a little bit. So anyway, as you can see, like that will be one that is replaced and that will probably be one that I just clean up. Yeah, so that's actually pretty well new itself. So I don't even have to do anything to that one. So that's new, it was not there before. When I say it wasn't there before, I don't think it was there when I test drove it in July, but we haven't been near anyone to damage it ourselves. So anyway, uh, we're getting there. I'm so happy, this is unreal. So anyway, I'm gonna cut you guys loose for the night. We're gonna have a barbecue and relax. And I'm just gonna get a few things tidied up for the ride tomorrow. And then tomorrow's the big day, lots of filming. See you guys. All right, everybody, we are at that time. This is my third day in Manitoba. I have my friend Chris with me. He's currently in our friend's trailer, uh, just finishing up getting ready. We're showered, we're packed, we're ready to roll out. Utilizing the overhead just to keep everything in the bus, out of the basin from rattling around. Under the bus, I've got four rims for my limo, three stud pilot rims for the bus. Still have to find three more to then have new rims to paint white, keep it uh, period accurate to Greyhound. So that's gonna be another video. Little delicate parts like my turn signal switch, and my NOS OEM side marker lamps that are a cast metal but finished in white. They're up here just to keep them nice and clean. The seller very graciously gave me a, like a full set of these little garbage bags to go in every seat. So as I get everything cleaned and detailed, I can really finish it out. So today we're hoping to make it as far as Nipigon. It's about a seven and a half hour drive from here. We're not gonna be pushing our luck. I will be stopping regularly. One, for photos. Two, to let the bus. I really do wanna keep an eye on my oil. Being a 6V92, I am burning oil. Like everyone has said, if it was dry or not burning oil, that would be a problem. But I also don't wanna drive you know, I have the longevity in fuel. I could drive straight through to Nipigon, and I've done those types of drives as a driver before with New York cities and stuff. I don't want to do that to the bus. I don't want to burn so much oil that it's then dry. So we're going to take our time. I'm hoping to be there by eight o'clock tonight. We are going to experience a time change. We are going to add an hour to our drive as we go east, but it's going to be great. So we, uh, we got up, I aired up the bus, threw on the fans, got it warmed up, defrosted. Just did a quick check of everything, got it fired up now. The generator is about to uh, kick on. Here she is. Our weather today is nice and cool. It's a little overcast, so driving east with the sun coming up, it'll be enjoyable. So we're gonna get out of the camp. We're gonna get out to the highway. We're gonna get some drone footage and uh, see what happens. All right, we'll see you on the other side.
Good morning everyone. It is now day two here at the bus. I'm gonna get it pre-tripped even though it's a private vehicle. I'm still doing a typical DVIR just because all those systems are still in place and I want to make sure that everything still works as it should. An hour and 20 minutes from here is Nipigon on Highway 11. It is the last fuel stop for several hours up Highway 11 heading towards Capus Casing. Yesterday we got seven hours of drive time in but I was stopping frequently checking the oil, learning all the ins and outs of this bus, getting the drone up, taking footage, doing whatever. And we had a later start. We were on the road around 10. It's now like 5.30 in the morning. So I'm hoping to be warmed up pre-trip with a coffee. There's a 24 hour grocery store, gonna go get some breakfast. I wanna be on the road by six. And then with our stops, if I add two hours to my day, I can be off the road by eight o'clock tonight safely with the sun just going down. I don't wanna be driving this thing at night just because there is a higher chance of a collision with deer and wildlife up here and I do not want to have any issues trying to have to replace this, uh, any body panels and stuff before I get home. So stay tuned, sit tight. Uh, Nipigon is a hit or miss location for fuel. It looks like they've price adjusted knowing that they are the last spot. Typically with my trips across the country and my advice from the seller and the uh, person that we were staying with, uh, Nipigon is sometimes a cheaper option, but checking online, looks like Thunder Bay right now is gonna be cheaper. So yesterday was Winnipeg to Thunder Bay, Today we're doing Thunder Bay to North Bay and then home tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a four or five hour drive if we make it to North Bay. So I'm gonna pre-trip, go to the grocery store, get my coffee and we'll be on our way. Alright everyone, we are in Nipigon, Ontario. We left Thunder Bay this morning. We filled up in fuel there. When I did my uh, searches online, I looked at the fuel is gonna be about 17 cents a liter cheaper in Thunder Bay, which is contrary to what typically happens being outside of that city. I'm glad I filled up there. I saved a bunch of money on my fuel. So we're in Nipigon. We got our oil filled up here and the reservoir filled up. So now we got our coffee and we're gonna be eastbound nonstop, hopefully to cap his casing. There isn't much on Highway 11 for us to stop. I will probably pull over roadside just to check my oil because we are burning some as is to be expected with this motor. So here we are, we got the bus, everything's looking great. And uh, we've already been stopped and uh, spoken to a few times by uh, old school truckers that love the old steel. So anyway, uh, let's see how far we get. Right, good morning everyone this is day three on the road uh, yesterday we didn't get as much filming done as we wanted to we really got a lot of miles done we got about 1100 kilometers under our belts yesterday left before 7 a.m and stopped along the way had a nice meal in new liskert ontario and we got here to north bay last night at around quarter after nine and i let a very good friend of mine take the bus for a spin so we didn't end up getting to our hotel until probably closer to 10 o'clock so what we're going to do now is we're going to pre-trip the bus and go find a Tim Hortons or a McDonald's or whatever, get our coffee. There's a grocery store up the road, get a breakfast. And then we're off to a bus yard where we're gonna show off the bus a bit and let people kind of really enjoy just the history of this bus uh, before we continue the last three hours and 45 minutes home. So today we are getting home and I'll get the vehicles moved around at the house to accommodate this thing in the driveway. And then the adventure really begins with preserving it, fixing it up, polishing it, repairing it. So I'm just gonna get my stuff settled, get uh, the camera properly set up, and then we will do a cold start and see how she goes. We are leaking a bit of oil. It's the original 38 year old 6V92, so we are going through oil. So I wanna make sure that everything is good before I do the cold start. So just uh, bear with me and we'll see what happens. One sec. All right, so I've checked the motor, the tires, the body, like everything's fine. We're ready to go. We're just going to do the startup procedure now. So with this bus, I don't have an alternator. I have a generator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I have nothing drawing power before I start it. For the first probably five or seven minutes that it's running, my understanding is dedicating its power to generating basically electrical stability to the coach. So I don't want to have fans running. I don't want to have lights running. I don't want to throw my high idle on because everything is air tensioned and has to air up. So we're just gonna do a simple cold start. I'm gonna go in, check out, come back, 
wipe down the dash, wipe down the glass, do all that. And then once the not gen light turns off, it'll be safe to high idle. I'll throw the heat on. This coach throws amazing heat. It's a little chilly today, so we still got about 30 minutes till we want to leave the hotel. So we're doing all right. So let's do this. First, so I need my master on. Then we want our lights off. Nothing else is on. We want that on. So that not gen is what we want to have turn off. Don't have any air over half a tank of fuel. That low oil light will definitely go out. Now we've never done a rear start on this coach and we've got some spectators. So let's see just how bad they're going to look at us for the smoke show. So here we have service lights. Don't need those. Front start. Front start. There we go. That was too easy. And I've never done that, so I probably didn't even have to hold the button that long. Cold start. All right, I'm gonna get all this closed up. I uh, don't wanna hurt it, I'll use two hands, but there we go, guys. I love this thing. All right, everyone, we are here in North Bay on our way back to Ottawa. I've been traveling from Winnipeg back to Ottawa with this 1982 MC9 replica Greyhound bus. I have my friend Chris with me. It's been an absolutely amazing road trip with a lot of great people on the way and a lot of memories made. While we're here uh, in North Bay, we've washed the bus and the whole reason in getting this bus was to preserve a piece of history. This whole bus is intact in a way that other buses just are not. After so many years, they get stripped, they get cannibalized, left out in the pasture or turned into motorhomes. This particular this particular bus was originally a sales unit for MCI and sold to Moose Mountain and you can see on the door there's that little Canadian leaf and this bus was wrapped as a Greyhound for a movie with Sean Penn which is coming out next year. COVID has totally put the brakes on that production but for the movie they put the American flag on. I'm going to be removing the American flag because on the other side uh, it was not accurate as per the flag code and all of the American followers and and uh, subscribers were pointing out that it was this direction on the other side so the stars were on the wrong end. I'm going to remove this and then have it properly done to replicate the proper AmeriCruiser with the proper lettering. But if you look at what they did here to make it American, they actually covered the factory Canada. So what I'm going to try to do is remove this silver vinyl. I'm going to pass the camera to Chris and see what we can uncover and then don't get mad when I take off that flag. All right, everyone, so still here in North Bay. We've been here for a few hours. I got the coach all washed. I'm here at Tisdale Bus Lanes where I am a part-time casual driver and the mechanic, Jordan, who is a wizard, has been helping with this bus. He got the turn signal lever done. We've tried a new turn signal flasher. It looks like I have something grounded out somewhere on one of my side marker lights. So it would flash once and then trip a relay. So we're gonna get it home. I'm gonna go through all the wiring, try to find out where it's grounding out. But I couldn't be happier with this stop. I got to see some great friends, got a lot of work done, got all my marker lights working. So we're almost in the home stretch for my Ontario inspection and we'll check in soon. All right, everyone, we're just finishing up here at the yard. I just wanted to come back to this real quick. So we did get that flag removed so we can do the proper Amero cruiser. And here we uncovered 38 year old graphics from MCI. So they're in, you know, not the best shape, but definitely better than what I expected peeling off something from over that. So I'm going to top up my fluids, check the oil, top them up, and we're gonna hit the road back to Ottawa. So let's wait to see what happens when we get home and Greg sees it for the first time. So stay tuned again. Just so we're clear, he told me to film my reaction. You know what my reaction is? Mm, just what we need, a bus. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh. 
All right, everybody, it is now Tuesday morning. We are home. The bus made it without incident, issues, or delay. About 2,200 kilometers from Winnipeg. Chris and I got to Winnipeg last Thursday, spent all day Friday going over the mechanicals of it and having just nice time with our friends at the camp, socially distancing and just really enjoying some time together because I don't know when we're going to see them again. And then on Saturday morning, we took off for Ottawa. I was budgeting time to have, whether it be a blowout, a breakdown, blown oil, or a power steering line, stuff like that. And this bus performed incredibly. We did stop in North Bay and wash the rear cap. We actually washed the whole thing, including the roof up over the sides. I have not done the, the actual roof itself yet. I could not be happier, guys. I do apologize for the long grass. And uh, Greg, while we were away, was able to do the weather stripping on the bottom of the garage. So pardon that. Today, we're gonna be cleaning up around the house. I'm gonna take the bus out later. I'm gonna do some errands with it. Not sure when it is again that I'll get some good road time with it. Guys, we did it. We're home and so begins the rest of our adventures. We're gonna have a lot of great videos on things that we're gonna update, improve, repair. We're gonna be doing some motor work. We're gonna be doing some work with the wheels and tires. I have new rims for it. One of the first episodes I wanna do is getting that step that slides out to uh, function. The motor works, it's just seized. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I could not thank everyone enough. Jason Hallett, thank you so much for your hospitality and just opening your bays to me in North Bay to let me work on the bus. Jordan Haskins, thank you so much for your mechanical expertise and the work that you did do on the bus for me. My seller, Andy and Pierre Lorraine from Lincoln's and Longhorns for putting us up and opening your tiny home conversion to us to have a safe, clean, sterile place to stay. Obviously, you know, I really wanna thank my dad for going out there with me in July, or I guess I went with him and uh, giving me the time and the means to like make this possible and just working with me and covering some stuff at home to let me go take care of this so so many people have helped make this happen everyone in the bus community i don't have time to, to list everyone in our bus forums who has reached out and offered expertise advice help or even things like you know stuff arriving in the mail to help with the preservation of history with this coach you all mean the world to me and i promise all of you that this bus is going to be well taken care of i'm going to preserve the history and i want to be a part of having our industry move forward beyond COVID and have a piece of the good old days continue on. We have no idea what our industry has in store for us. COVID has shown us that life can change tomorrow. And I didn't want to wait another 40 years dreaming of having a coach bus. We had to make it happen. Again, this is private use, not for hire, not for charter. This is a toy that I want to share with all of you, whether it be through media or you guys physically getting the chance to drive it, going back to the good old days when you guys all started behind the wheel. So again, thank you for following. I can't wait for more. I'm going to get inside and start editing videos and also not just editing but cutting them together huge 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 thank you to bice hd so the way we do this is i take videos i will cut them down to a proper size take out dead air take out things that we don't need in the video i then spend several days on our slow internet uploading them to him in florida he then puts these videos together with his absolute expertise and production value so bice thank you so 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 much i can't take any credit for editing what I meant by that was just that I trim the fat, give him the good stuff, and then he just makes it an absolute masterpiece. So go down to the link below and check out his channel. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel, these videos, and all of his too, and we'll have more to come. Thanks, guys.